What's good y'all, BK back here with Cliff Pickleball and today I wanted to talk to you about something that's fundamental to the game of pickleball. This skill right here is really what separates the sport of pickleball to any other racket sport out there. It's a fundamental part of the game and is usually one of the hardest things to learn but once you master the skill, it'll take your pickleball game to the next level. Let's see what it is. So if you haven't guessed it by now, the skill that we're gonna talk about today is dinking. Dinking is that one skill in pickleball that separates it from all other racket sports. You don't really see any other racket sport have this particular shot in their game. The reason the shot is so important is the best way to attack a ball is if the ball is above net height. That's where you can hit the ball downward and really hit those quick counter shots or power shots. The dinking takes that away from the game. It's a great way to reset a point. It's a great way to stay in a point and make sure that your opponent isn't able to attack you. It's an amazing way to slow down the game and control the game if you do it well. So today we're gonna learn about how to properly dink and what really separates dinking from the three five levels to the four five plus levels. So the skill of dinking is where you try to keep the ball in the kitchen. This is where two players will literally stand at the kitchen line trying to put the ball back into the kitchen, making sure that the ball bounces in the kitchen or somewhere close to the kitchen so that your opponent isn't able to slam the ball down over the net. It's a great skill to utilize when you're trying to control the game and let's see what the mechanic of a dink looks like. So the first thing you want to make sure to do is have the right kind of grip. The easiest way to dink is to use the continental grip and the continental grip is an essential part of pickleball so make sure you look that up if you don't know what that is. Using the continental grip it's important to have the right paddle angle. For example, if I keep my paddle face like this with the paddle facing up, as you can see with just general physics that ball is going to go straight up into the air. And if I keep my paddle face too low facing into the ground on the edge, now that paddle face is facing too low and I'm going to put the ball right into the net. The ideal dink is where you have that 45 degree angle on your paddle face where you can use the angle to simply pop that ball over the net and bring it back down before your opponent can take it out of the air. Now that we learned the paddle angles and grip for the dink, it's important to know what the footwork is like. The footwork is what sets up your dink shot. Early preparation is key to any shot, including the dink. So always make sure that you're using your feet to get to the perfect point where you can hit that ball in front of your body. So to set up for a dink, first make the decision if you're gonna hit the ball on your forehand or your backhand. Once you decide that you're gonna hit it on one side, you have to make sure that you move your feet to set yourself up for that shot. If that ball's coming cross court to me and I decide that I'm gonna hit that ball with my backhand and it's bouncing fairly deep into the kitchen, I'm going to take a couple side shuffles, make sure that that ball bounces, has a nice elevation, and try to hit that ball at the top of its bounce, which will give me the best possible situation to get that ball over the net and back down. If I contact the ball too low after its bounce, or wait for the ball to bounce and then come back all the way to the ground, now I need to spend extra energy and power to get that ball all the way over the net and back down. The ideal dink is where you contact that ball in front of your body at the top of its bounce, where it's easier for me to put that ball over the net. So, the first thing to do when you're practicing the dink is Right here, I'm gonna dink with my partner and simply show you the mechanics of how to properly hit the dink. So I'm gonna have my partner stand cross court for me as most of our dinks are gonna be try to hit cross court. Hitting the ball cross court gives you more distance and more time to get the ball over the net and back down. The down the line distance is really short for you to try and get that ball consistently down before your opponent can take it out of the air. So if, if possible, always try to hit your cross court dink first. So right here, as you can see, my goal is to try and put the ball into the kitchen so that my opponent cannot attack it. The way I'm gonna do this is with that 45 degree angle on my paddle face and simply pick that ball up using my shoulder. If you look closely, I'm not using my elbow. All I'm doing is using my shoulder to lift that ball and put it back down. The next thing is my footwork. Every time my opponent hits the ball, I'm making sure that I'm moving to the ball. Once again, the footwork is really important to the dink. Every time my opponent hits the ball, I'm setting myself up early and stopping my footwork so that I can hit the ball with just my arm. Footwork is essential to set up your dinks. So always make sure as soon as you see that ball, you set up your feet to make contact in front of your body. The other important part of the dink is to always try to hit your ball with your square feet. You want an open stance on these dinks and not try to cross your feet over because that'll bring you out of position 
and make it easier for your opponent to attack your inside leg. So as much as I can, I'm going to hit these dings with an open stance. Now if my opponent really puts me out of position, then I'll close my stance. But when I do that, I'm going to hit a softer dink so that he cannot take that ball out early, giving me enough time to get back into position. Now if you've never hit a dink before, this right here is a great way to practice the dink and understand the mechanics of what goes into the dink. Right here I have a pickleball and I'm simply going to use my hands, no paddle, and go through the motion of what a dink looks like. So I'm simply going to take the ball, put it on the palm of my hand, and let that ball roll down to my fingers. As it's reaching the end of my fingers, I'm simply going to flick my hand upwards towards my partner so that I can roll the ball to my partner. My partner is going to catch that ball and do the same thing back and forth. So we're simply going to get low. Make sure, again, your stance is really important. Your footwork is really important. Knees bend. Simply have your arm outstretched in front of you and use just your palm and your fingers with that shoulder hinge to toss that ball to your partner. Once again, my partner is going to do the same thing back to me. Let that ball roll down your palm and flick it with your fingers into the kitchen. The little flick will really help you understand how to get that ball over the net with topspin back down. It's a great way to really understand the mechanics of the dinks before you start playing pickleball. So now that we learned the mechanics of the dinks, it's now time to see what dinking looks like in a match setting. We have levels that go from 3-0, 3-5, 4-0, 4-5, 5-0, -5 and all the way up to 7. But these dinking stages are also very different between these levels. So right here I'm going to try and show you what the difference looks like between dinking at the 3-5 level and dinking at 4-5 and above. So first I'm going to show you what dinking looks like around the 3-5 level. This is where you're simply going to dink back and forth with your opponent and there's not a lot of aggression or spin or any variations to the dink. Right here you'll see what 3-5 dinking looks like. As you can see there's not a lot of variation and I'm simply dinking the same spot over and over again just simply trying to get control. While this is great to keep the ball in play, my opponent isn't threatened by any of these dinks. These dinks are not causing him any problems at all. He's simply getting the ball back with no issues whatsoever. And now we're going to see what dinking looks like at the 4-5 plus level. This is where I'm actually going to try to move him around and utilize my dinks as an offensive weapon. I'm going to try and be aggressive with these dinks, really get him out of position and put a lot of variations on these dinks. Let's see what it looks like. As you can see, I'm not just dinking the same spot over and over again. I'm hitting topspin dinks to the corner, I'm hitting dinks into his inside foot, I'm hitting deeper dinks, shorter dinks, I'm putting a lot of variations on these. I'm cutting the angle, I'm making, his move, making him move his feet, I'm doing so many things to these balls that it's a lot harder for him to simply get the ball back without any issues. He really has to think about what his shots look like every time I do this. To really explore the game and expand your arsenal. Being able to be aggressive with your dinks will definitely take your game to the next level. If I can use my dinks to set up more finish opportunities, take more balls out of the air, and really move my opponent around, I'm going to set myself up for easier points. Just like that. Now at the higher levels, there's two really important variations to the dink that you have to know. We call this the push dink and the lift dink. The push dink is where you're really aggressive with your dink, really trying to push your opponent back, move them off the kitchen line, and be aggressive with your topspin. Whereas the lift dink is the counter to this, where you're more defending the dink and really trying to just lift that ball over the net and back down to give yourself time to reset your position. Let's see what these dinks look like. So right here I'm hitting some push dinks where I'm really pushing my opponent backward. When I'm hitting the push dink, I'm really trying to push my opponent off the kitchen line using my top spin and trying to keep the ball really close to the height of the net. I don't want to lift this ball too much, I'm simply going to use my angles and my top spin to move my opponent around. Right there, as you can see, the push dink got so close to his feet that he had to take it really low and that caused the error into the net. 
Now the counter to this is what I, where I hit a lift dink. If my opponent hits a good topspin dink towards my back leg, I'm gonna simply open my paddle face and lift that ball over the net, giving me time to reset my feet. So I'm simply gonna lift that ball over the net and reset my feet. I don't wanna to be too aggressive with balls that are coming close to my feet, as that will really make me hit an error into the net. So instead, I'm just gonna open my face and put that ball back over the net. Thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something about dinking and how important it is to the game of pickleball and really utilize it to use your variations and be aggressive with your dinks and control the game. I've been BK with Cliff Pickleball and you can follow me at BK underscore Pickleball on Instagram and YouTube and also make sure to subscribe to Cliff Pickleball below. I'll see you next time.